The photograph you are seeing corresponds to the last minutes of the life of a man who paid the ultimate price for committing an incredible war crime. Today, we are going to know his story. Once World War II ended, the Allied side sought to find some kind of justice among all the horror that was experienced. To this end, military trials were held, and many of these processes culminated in public executions. Among the criminals who met that fate was Anton Dossler, a Wehrmacht infantry colonel who signed his own death warrant by carrying out one of the Third Reich's most infamous orders. In this new military history video, we are going to tell you how this successful colonel ended tied up in front of a firing line. Anton Dossler was born on May 10, 1891 in Munich, into a typical German family. Not much is known about his youth, only that at the age of 19 he joined the German ranks, serving as a junior officer during World War I, thanks to his great performance in the conflict, he remained a central figure within the German army. Already in World War II, Dossler carried out several positions of great importance, Chief of Staff of the 7th Army during the campaign in France, Commander of the 57th Infantry Division, and finally Commander of the 75th Army Corps in Italy. It was in this latter capacity that he carried out the war crime that sealed his fate. On March 22, 1944, a commando of 15 American soldiers landed on the Italian coast, a few kilometers from the combat front. The team's mission was to destroy a railway tunnel that linked the cities of La Spezia and Genoa. The sabotage was known by the soldiers as Operation Ginny II, since it was the sequel to a mission with the same name and failed results in February of that same year. Sequels are never good, and Ginny II was destined for tragedy. A planning error caused soldiers to be sent into enemy territory without civilian clothing to keep a low profile. The men wore the classic uniform of the United States Army, apart from that dangerous detail, they did not have identification that associated them with the Office of Strategic Services, the American Intelligence Service during World War II. This would be vitally important to the Dossler trials, as only saboteurs disguised in civilian clothing could be executed. After two days hiding in the Italian camp, the members of the American commando were located and taken prisoner by Italian and German soldiers. The components of the U.S. commando were locked up in the vicinity of La Spezia to be interrogated about their mission. After beatings and torture, one of the officers confessed the reasons for his presence in the region. Given this information, General Anton Dossler, commander of the military zone where they were located, approved the execution of the 15 U.S. soldiers, a sentence that was carried out on March 26, 1944. This decision was controversial, since, according to Dossler, the order was carried out in the first instance by Field Marshal Albert Kesselring, commanding general of all German forces in Italy. In addition, Dossler relied on an order given by Adolf Hitler in 1942, which established the immediate execution without trial of all enemies who were taken prisoner. The person who was to carry out the execution was Colonel Almers, of the 135th Brigade. Almers was uncomfortable with the order and contacted Dossler to delay carrying it out. In response, General Dossler sent another telegram ordering the subordinate that he carry out the order immediately, or he should face military court for disobedience. Almers made two more attempts to stop the execution, including phone calls, the colonel knew that the killing of uniformed POWs was a violation of the 1929 Geneva Convention. His appeals were unsuccessful and the 15 American soldiers they were executed on March 26, 1944, in Punta Blanca, south of La Spezia. Their bodies were buried in a common grave that was later camouflaged. Dossler didn't know it yet, but he had just driven the first nail into his coffin. During the Allied invasion of Italy in 1945, Anton Dossler was taken as a prisoner of war by the United States Army. It didn't take them long to put two and two together to understand that they were facing the man who had massacred 15 of his companions in cold blood and that, therefore, the soldier had to be prosecuted for war crimes. The trial took place at the headquarters of the Supreme Allied Command, the Royal Palace of Caserta, on October 8, 1945. In the first of the trials, Dossler was accused of carrying out an illegal order. In his defense, 
He maintained that he had not personally issued the order, but had only passed it on to Colonel Almers. This argument was not convincing, the attempts to stop the execution by Almers were enough to show that Dossler was aware that he was committing a crime by executing prisoners. As we anticipated, the clothing of the American soldiers was a decisive factor at the time of the conviction. According to the Hague Convention, signed in 1907, it is legal to execute spies and saboteurs disguised in civilian clothes or enemy uniforms, but not captured prisoners in their respective uniforms. This was the case of the 15 commandos that operated in La Spezia. They all wore official clothing, which distinguished them from spies and identified them as prisoners of war. For this reason, they had to be kept alive, regardless of the orders received. The military commission also rejected his petition for clemency, declaring that a violation of the Geneva Convention could not be taken lightly. In the ruling, the court declared no soldier, let alone a commanding general, can be heard to say that he considers the summary shooting of prisoners of war legitimate, even as a reprisal. During the trial, General Dossler was found guilty of war crimes, rejecting the superior order's defense. After much deliberation, the man was sentenced to death, the same sentence he carried out on the 15 American soldiers. On December 1, 1945, just before 8 a.m., Anton Dossler was escorted from his cell to the firing squad. The colonel was dressed in his military uniform, corresponding to an execution for a war crime. His hands were secured behind his back, and in front of him were 12 soldiers armed with rifles. At 8 o'clock, they opened fire, Dossler's body was hit by a dozen American munitions, dying almost immediately. However, that was not all, the execution was photographed on black and white film, and then reproduced in newspapers throughout Europe and the United States. Immediately after the execution, Dossler's body was lifted on a stretcher, wrapped in a white cotton cover, and driven in an army truck to its final resting place. The body was buried in grave 93-95 in Section H at the Pomesia German War Cemetery. Thus ended the career of a respected German strategist and commander whose death sentence was signing the wrong order. Dossler's execution was the first of many carried out for similar crimes, in which the basic rules of war were ignored, in favor of the barbarism proposed by the Third Reich. We reached the end of the video, and we want to thank you once again for joining us to learn about this story. If you like our content and you are not yet subscribed to the channel, we invite you to do so, and also to activate notifications. For the moment, we say goodbye until the next installment of Military History.